The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Polyatomic ions. Let's begin here with a definition. Polyatomic ions contain tightly bound groups of atoms and are held together by covalent bonds that behave as a unit and carry a charge. Now, in Table 1.10 here and Table 1.11, we're given the common polyatomic ions, as we see here. Now, the bad news with polyatomic ions is that there is no system to name them, as we had with binary com as we had with bi our binary compounds thus far. Thus, you're just going to have to memorize the most, uh, the most common ones. However, if for multiple choice scenarios, I will uh, go over the tables here to uh, point out some of the prevalent features. For example, firstly, in our tables here, there's only one, uh, there's only going to be one cation present. That's the ammonium, as you see here. Secondly, most most polyatomic ions have an ATE ending, or have an ATE ending or an ITE ending, and we'll talk a little bit more about that momentarily. And also, only azide, cyanide, hydroxide, as well as the sulfide and oxygen anions have an IDE ending, as we see here. And most polyatomic ions form oxo anions and let's talk about oxo anions now on the next slide here we are uh, let's begin here with the definition oxo anions are polyatomic ions which contain one or more oxygen atoms and an atom of another element which is the uh, the central atom now when we have two oxo anions in a series as we see here for nitrate and nitrite and sulfate and sulfite note that the ite ending the ite ending is given to the uh, polyatomic ion with less oxygens with fewer oxygens as we see here now excuse me and the ate ending the ate ending is given to the polyatomic ion with more oxygens as we see here Furthermore, when we have more when we have more than two oxo anions in a series, as we see here for perchlorate, chlorate, chloride, and hypochlorite, the prefix per meaning more than that's being given to the it's going to be given to the polyatomic ion that has one more oxygen than the polyatomic ion that ended in ATE. Furthermore, the hypo prefix that uh, meaning less than that's going to be given to the polyatomic ion that has one less oxygen one less oxygen than the polyatomic ion here with uh, the ite ending now po the polyatomic ions are also uh, can be named due to the presence or absence of hydrogen as well let's take a look at that when they're the with the presence of oxygen all you would need to do oh, excuse me with the presence or uh, presence or absence of hydrogen i meant to say when the hydrogen is present then you would just name the hydrogen and then the ion let's take a look at that now for example here we see just carbonate with the presence of hydrogen it's going to be hydrogen carbonate and the same thing for hydrogen sulfite and sulfate right and similar scenario for hydrogen sulfite and sulfite and the same thing for hydrogen phosphate right hydrogen phosphate and phosphate additionally we should also take note of the fact that instead of having to write hydrogen uh, the the uh, polyatomic ions that in these types of scenarios that are named hydrogen carbonate the prefix bi is just given so instead of writing hydrogen carbonate it can it, you may also see it written as bicarbonate it's just good to know and instead of hydrogen sulfate you may see it written as bisulfate and so on with uh, bisulfite okay now that we've taken a look at the names of uh, the common polyatomic ions let's go ahead and see how we would name compounds containing polyatomic ions let's do that on 